wants to come out of the metal surface. So the threshold frequency is the minimum frequency that should be possessed by the photons, incident photons, which can result in the photoelectric emission. So this threshold frequency definition and work function definition, they, these two definitions are very important and we have to understand this very clearly. So now if you consider this energy H nu, incident energy, it is used, utilized in two ways as I told you. One is to overcome this work function, another or remaining, remaining energy is imparted to this electrons, photoelectrons which are coming out of the metal surface. So that, that energy is imparted to this photoelectrons which is given by the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons emitted. So we can write this equation H nu equal to work function plus half m v square. So the incident energy H nu is utilized in two ways as I told you earlier. One is to overcome this work function that is the characteristics of every metal surface and the, the second part of the equation says it is a kinetic energy of electrons emitted. So substituting that H nu equal to H nu naught plus half m v square. So we can rewrite this as or we can write kinetic energy of photoelectrons as half m v square equal to H nu minus nu naught. We rearrange this equation to get this one. So this equation relates kinetic energy of photoelectrons and the frequency of incident radiation. So this equation is called as Einstein's photoelectric equation. So this equation is given by Einstein and so it is named after him as Einstein's photoelectric equation. So actually Einstein gave theoretical explanation for photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect was invented by Hertz and Halbach and Einstein gave the theoretical explanation for that. Next we will be studying the experimental setup which was used by Halbach to study the phenomenon of photoelectric effect. So now we will see the experimental study. Now I will be drawing the setup used by Hall watch.
So now if you see this experimental setup, Hall was used an evacuated glass tube having a side tube, there one window he kept so that light radiation of suitable frequency can be falling on this plate P. So, this plate P is called emitter because it will emit electrons when light of or radiation of suitable frequency falls on this plate and Q is called collector because this will collect the photoelectrons emitted by the plate P. Now, voltmeter measures the P D applied across the two plates and this ammeter measures the photoelectric current. Once these photoelectrons reach plate Q, they will be attracted by this positive potential applied here. So, they will constitute current which will be shown by this milli ammeter. Now, this setup is used for changing the polarity. So, this is the potential divider arrangement and this battery arrangement supplies sufficient P D across the plates P and Q. Initially, the plate Q, the collector plate is given positive potential. That means, it is at higher potential with respect to the plate P. So, Hall was observed that when no radiation was falling on this plate P, the milliammeter or the ammeter showed zero current. That means, no current was registered in this circuit. Then he made some radiation to fall on this metal plate P. That time he observed that the milliammeter showed some current provided the plate Q is kept at higher potential with respect to P. So, then he explained that when radiation of suitable frequency falls on this metal plate P, the photoelectrons are emitted due to photoelectric effect. The plate Q being positive attracts all these negatively charged electrons and then the current flows in the circuit. Now, using this setup, three factors affecting photoelectric effects were studied. The first factor is intensity of incident radiation, second is potential applied, potential difference applied across the plates P and Q, third factor is frequency. So, we will be studying the effect of one of these factors at a time, how these factors are affect going to affect the photoelectric effect that we are going to study. So, the experimental setup I think it is clear. Now, this setup is used, this arrangement commutator is used for changing the polarity. So, what was observed in this experiment was that when the plate Q was given negative potential instead of positive, that time what happened? Even though the electrons were emitted with maximum kinetic energy or maximum velocity, even those electrons were not able to reach the plate Q. This was observed when the negative potential applied to Q was gradually increased. At certain time, what happened? The this mill, the milliammeter or micrometer, whatever is connected in this ammeter, will show zero deflection. That means no current is passing. So that negative potential, which is applied to the collector plate, at at which at that point where photoelectric current becomes zero is called stopping potential. So, stopping potential is the negative potential applied to the collector plate when current becomes 0, photoelectric current becomes 0. So, that stopping potential, why it is called stopping potential? Because the electrons emitted from the metal surface are stopped in reaching the collector plate. So, that negative potential is called the stopping potential where the current becomes 0, photoelectric current becomes 0. Now, the stopping potential is also measure of the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons because even if the photoelectrons are traveling with maximum velocity thereby possessing maximum kinetic energy of m 
V max square. Even those electrons are not able to reach the collector plate because they will be repelled by the negative potential applied. So, we can say that the stopping potential is the measure of maximum kinetic energy emitted by the photoelectrons. Because work done, you know that work done is V into Q, that is PD into charge is the work done. And work done can be taken as kinetic energy. So, in this case, the potential is stopping potential and charge is electron. So, we can write work done equal to E into V naught. So, we can equate E into V naught equal to half m V max square. Okay. So, this work done by the potential difference applied across the two plates on this photoelectrons will be equal to maximum kinetic energy possessed by the photoelectrons. So, this equation So, this already we have studied that kinetic energy of photoelectron is equal to h into nu minus nu naught according to Einstein's photoelectric equation. So, this relation relates the energy possessed by the incident photon that is h nu minus h nu naught. So, as we have already studied this h nu naught is nothing but work function. So, this relation gives an idea how the incident energy the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons and stopping potential, how these three are related. So, from this equation, we can clearly understand that kinetic energy of photoelectrons depends only on the frequency and it is not depending upon the intensity of incident radiation. So, that point we can make it very clear from this equation because kinetic energy is proportional to the frequency, h being constant. We, this relation from this we can understand clearly that kinetic energy of photoelectrons directly proportional to the frequency of the radiation. So, intensity is not going to affect the kinetic energy of emitted photoelectrons. So, now based on this experimental setup and this equation we will be studying one by one the factors affecting photoelectric current. So, first we will see how the intensity is going to affect the photoelectric current. Photoelectric current I. So, how these two are related? So, what do we mean by intensity of radiation? Suppose you have got 50 watt bulb, 100 watt bulb, say 200 watt bulb. So, we know that the light coming from 200 watt bulb will be brighter than other two bulbs. So, we say that intensity of light coming out of this bulb will be more. So, intensity actually means or it is a measure of number of photons emitted number of photons emitted. So, when number of photons emitted are more, when these more number of photons are falling on the metal surface, naturally more number of electrons will be ejected out. So, these electrons emitted will constitute more current because more number of electrons are coming out. So, the current will also increase. So, if you draw a graph between photoelectric current and intensity of instant radiation. So, this I represents photoelectric current. So, we see that there will be a straight line because as intensity of incident radiation increases, photoelectric current also increases. Therefore, we get a straight line graph. So, intensity of incident radiation and current are related by direct proportion. So, because intensity more, intensity more means more number of photons are going to fall on the metal surface. So, more electrons will be emitted. So, current will be naturally more. So, when you study this factor that is intensity, we have to keep other two factors constant that is 
we have to keep particular potential difference across the two plates by giving fixed potential difference and having the energy of the incident radiation fixed that is frequency of incident photon also should be kept fixed then we will be changing the intensity of radiation. So, when we study uh, three factors when there are three factors affecting one particular quantity we will be studying one by one keeping other two factors constant. So, when we study about intensity these two should be kept constant. So, by adjusting the potential divider or rheostat arrangement this P d will be kept constant and we have to fix the energy of incident radiation or the frequency of incident radiation by fixing that these two factors we can study the effect of intensity on photoelectric current. So, we have done with this that is intensity of incident radiation we have studied and we have seen that photoelectric current is directly proportional to intensity of incident radiation. Now, we will see how potential is going to affect potential is going to affect the photoelectric current the second factor this one we have to study. So, as I mentioned earlier when we are studying about this factor these two should be kept constant. So, we will keep the frequency of incident radiation or energy of incident radiation constant and we will study how photoelectric current is going to be affected. So, y axis we are taking photoelectric current I and x axis will be taking positive potential and this will be the negative potential. So, it is observed that keeping frequency constant. So, now if you apply positive potential if you go on increase the positive potential apply to the collector plate we observe that the current gradually increases and becomes maximum. So, beyond this limit the photoelectric current will not increase at all. So, this state is called saturation. So, what is the meaning of saturation here? Saturation here means that maximum number of photoelectrons are emitted from the metal surface. So, no more electrons will be emitted. So, this current will become saturated. So, this happens when the positive potential is increased. Now, if the polarity is reversed using the commutator polarity